Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual Exploration Presentations. Uh, we're here with Ashland University to discuss um, their amazing opportunities for our students. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to utilize the Q&A function that you have at the bottom of your screen. Um, our presenter will be able to see it and address them as she is able to. Your camera and microphone are turned off during the entire presentation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy learning everything about Ashland. Um, if you'd like to learn more about other universities, we do have some more sessions available through the rest of this week. You can learn that on look at the schedule through NAC.org. And then this presentation will be recorded if you would like to go back and refresh your memory on anything. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kylie and she's going to talk about Ashland University. All right, thank you so much. Just give me a moment here, guys, as I share my screen with you all. I am super excited that you chose to attend Ashland University's session tonight. I am obviously a little bit biased. I am an admissions counselor at Ashland University, so I literally get paid to say nice things. But on top of that, I'm an alumna as well. So I truly could not have went from doing four years of undergrad courses on campus to accepting a position and staying here. I graduated a long time ago. Um, I would not have been able to stay for as long as I did around the area unless I truly believed that Ashland University in Ashland, Ohio was someplace special. I'm not the only one that sees how great we are. In fact, we are ranked pretty highly by the Higher Learning Commission, the Princeton Review, and the US News and World Report. We've been around for about 142 years. Um, when we first started, we had less than 100 students attending classes and we only offered two programs. When Ashland College was founded, we wanted to make sure that our students were going on to become either teachers or preachers. Now, 142 years later, we have just shy of 4,500 students taking courses with us this year. 2,100 of those students are on our main campus here in Ashland, Ohio, pursuing their undergraduate degree, so their bachelor's degree, very much like you guys will be doing here in the next year or so. We now have expanded our course offerings to be over 60 different majors, and that will range from business majors, health sciences, nursing, education, art, business, all those different types of things that we will touch on here in just a few moments. Um, but at the heart and soul of what Ashland University is, even though we are a little bit larger than when we started off, we've always kept small class sizes. We currently offer a um, class size average of about 18 students. The smallest class you ever have is five. The largest class you'll have will be somewhere in the 30s. Um, but nonetheless, you will never be more you will never be just a number to your professors. We only use professors who already have a higher or the highest degree in their field, meaning that we don't have somebody teaching our students that might be a graduate assistant or a teaching assistant. We don't utilize those positions to teach our students because we know that an undergraduate career for you all is the foundation of higher education. We wanna make sure that our students are being taught by some of the best and some of the most um, sought after experts in their field. Now, if you are joining us today after having already completed high school and already having some college credit under your belt and you're thinking about transferring to Ashland University, you can feel right at home because just about 25% of our incoming students every year um, are on the same boat that you're in. At the end of the day, regardless of how um, or what you study here at Ashland University, our mission is pretty simple. We wanna make sure that we are preparing our students to become well-rounded human beings who are going to go on to work, serve, and lead with integrity, whether that be in their local, national, or global communities. We promise that when you're with us, we're never going to tell you that you have to believe what we believe, or you have to believe what your professor is saying, or you have to believe or behave a certain way, or um, we don't ever say this is the, the Ashland University cookie cutter, and we need you to fit inside of it. That's not the deal that we have with our students. We want to prepare our students to go on um, to be able to think critically. So while we are teaching you, um, we'll be giving you the tools to think critically, 
not only while you're in college, but whenever you're in your everyday life as well. So at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that we're preparing our students to know how to think and not what to think necessarily. When we are talking about preparing well-rounded human beings, we know that a lot of that comes from a well-rounded education, which is why we offer our comprehensive education, also known as our core curriculum. For us, our core um, involves very much what you guys are used to studying when it comes to core curriculum in high school. We are um, having our students take classes in math and logic and history and social sciences and natural sciences and aesthetics. We wanna make sure our students are you know, dabbling in all the different types of classes that we can offer. Firstly, because that's how you build a well-rounded education. Secondly, for students who might not know 100% what they wanna study, which could be you, um, we wanna make sure our students are getting their toes wet in all these different areas. Um, maybe they're gonna find out that they wanna major in something like psychology and they never thought about it before. Maybe they're going to realize they love history the way that we're teaching it in the college level and they want to pick up a minor or just take a few extra history classes. Um, but it also helps our students just become um, a well-rounded and a well-educated adult later on. If you are a student who is sitting there today and you're like, no, look, I, I know I want to go to college, but I'm not 100% sure what I want to study or what I want to do or what I'm going to do forever, completely okay. In fact, we welcome that at Ashland University. The majority of our incoming class comes in still deciding, whether that be coming in 100%, I have no idea what I wanna do, or coming in with a few different ideas. Um, we will help you once you are here. We have a stellar life calling um, office or a department on campus that also offers life calling classes, which helps our students discern their occupational life calling and then kind of work backwards from, okay, well, we think this is what you're meant to be doing occupationally. Let's help you educationally next. We are here as a support system every single step of the way. For the time being, while you guys are in the admissions process, which is anytime you're in high school, um, we will be working with you in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. We are the go-to for any questions that you may have about financial aid, academics, student, uh, student life, things like that. But once you're on campus, there's an entire team of professionals that are here just for you. Your um, Center for Academic Support, you'll likely become best friends with your professional academic advisor your first year. Um, every student is given a professional academic advisor and you start to meet with her during orientation, which is in June after you've graduated high school. She'll be the one that puts together your first semester schedule with you and then whenever you are officially an Eagle, when you're officially taking classes with us this fall, um, she'll be meeting with you quite a bit. She'll teach you a class called Success, where you and your other classmates with like-minded majors will be together a few times a week. And then you'll also be having individual appointments with her, making sure that you are taking advantage of all things that Ashland University can offer you, making sure you're getting acclimated to campus well, but also she'll be that person that when you have questions, about classes or majors or programs or anything like that, she'll be your go-to. You always have her in your corner, but after your first year, you will transition from having the, the professional academic advisor meet with you pretty often to meeting with a faculty member or a faculty mentor at least once a semester. Just like your academic advisor is teaching you in a course, um, your, your professional, or I'm sorry, your faculty mentor will also be teaching you, but obviously classes based in your major. Um, you'll meet with a advisor, whether it be faculty um, or professional, every semester leading up to graduation. It's how we can ensure that our students will graduate on their timeline. We also um, utilize those connections to talk about maybe you're struggling in a class. Maybe it's because you need to um, tone up your soft skills like uh, time management, study skills, responsibility, things like that. Maybe it's because you're just struggling with the subject or uh, the way that a certain professor is teaching that you're not used to. Completely okay, we have tons of support, whether that be something like a free peer tutor or maybe working a little bit more closely with our student accessibility service. 
um, we've already talked a little bit about the career calling or the career center for life calling. But once you decide and once you, they help you figure out what your occupational life calling is and what you're supposed to be majoring in, we will then utilize them essentially forever. Um, you'll utilize them for um, internship postings, for resume help, with help with your interviews. They'll also be bringing in career um, fairs throughout campus. And you're always welcome to utilize them even as an alumni. Um, we are doing the uh, tons and tons of great things on campus um, for our um, diversity and inclusion, for our military and veterans resources. We have tons of offices there to help all types of students, um, whether it be in the admissions process, the current student process, or the alumna process later on. Um, whether you feel physically ill or whether you just need a little bit of help with your, um, with your mental state, completely okay. We know that um, during your time, you, you might get sick or you might need to have a conversation with a mental health specialist. And we have you here. Um, we have your back every single step of the way. We already talked a lot about the academic side of Ashland, which of course is the bread and butter of all universities. It's the heart and soul of higher education is making sure that we're providing our students with a well-rounded education. We do things a little bit differently though. So you might've already heard the term direct admit during your college search process. But what that means, if you're not familiar with the term, is that when you apply to Ashland University, you'll have the opportunity to choose a major on your application. If you are somebody who has an idea of what you'd like to major in, say you chose primary education, your very first class and your very first semester will be a primary education course. So that way our students are hitting the ground running. We're able to make sure that our students are in the right place studying the right things. And then if it's for our students, that's awesome. Now we have four years to help our students by giving them the best education and the best experiences possible. If you are a student who um, thought you wanted to be do primary education and you take your first class and you decide it's not for you, that's okay as well. Now we have more time to help you figure out what is for you and help you explore your options. Regardless of what major you choose from Ashland University, our hope is that we can provide you with as much hands-on learning experiences as possible. For example, if you're gonna be a business student, you're going to complete internships while also working on projects in your classes. If you are going to be an education major, you're gonna graduate with like 700 hours of field experience. If you are somebody who's thinking about nursing or health sciences, we definitely are gonna get you in those clinical settings as early on as we can. So that way, when you graduate, you have more than just, hey, I attended Ashland on my resume. Not only are you gonna have a stellar education on your resume, but you're also gonna have the experience needed to back it up. If you're somebody who's thinking, hey, I wanna go on to become a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist or a veterinarian, we can definitely get you there. In fact, we boast pretty high acceptance rates into all um, professional schools across the country. It's super unique to have direct admit programming at the undergraduate level anyways, but especially when it comes to nursing. With our students um, starting in their nursing program or all health sciences um, as early on as possible, our students will have tons of experience. So for example, utilizing nursing, which is one of our most popular majors, if you are um, a first semester nursing student, you're working with our cadaver lab on campus. And then for two years, you're taking your common core classes and nursing classes until you get to your third year when you start working with actual patient care. So you'll be in clinicals, in geriatrics, pediatrics, medical surgery, um, psychology. Um, you'll be in tons and tons of clinical hours your last two years with us, which will be just in time for you to sit for your licensure exam known as the NCLEX. Um, 95% of our students are passing on the first try, so I have faith that you will too. And then you can start your job on the floor right away. If you're thinking about becoming a registered dietitian, our dietetics majors currently have a 100% pass rate with our students or on that exam. Our dietetic students work with our student body, um, primarily with our student athletes in our athletic nutrition center. Same with our exercise science students. We utilize our human performance lab um, quite often with our exercise science students that could be working with athletes um, or anywhere from pediatric to geriatric age patients. Our College of Education, which is what we are founded on, is still one of our leading majors. 
Um, we offer majors within the College of Education, such as primary education, which in Ohio, um, primary education is anywhere from pre-K through five. So you are being set up to teach in, um, in a generic middle school or a, a generic elementary um, program. Middle grades education is four through nine, where you pick two of the four content areas, math, language, arts, science, or history. And you choose any combination of them, as long as you're choosing two. And then of course, we also are preparing some of our students to go on to do high school education. We do an integrated program that allows our students to be certified to teach seven through 12. And then you choose one subject area with that. And then of course, our intervention specialist program is a standalone program, but a lot of our students are picking up some intervention specialist courses or even double majoring with one of the other education programs. So they are certified to go on to teach all types of classrooms, integrated or not. Um, I already mentioned the amount of field experience our students are getting. We utilize local school districts, but we do our best not to send our students back to the same classroom. So um, this way our students are learning more about the education program um, by teaching students of different socioeconomic levels and different demographics. We want our students to experience different school districts, different administration styles. And then of course, we always wrap up our program with a full-time student teaching position for one semester. Um, we have tons of options to complete that. It could be some place closer to home for you, it could be someplace um, in Ohio, or it could be one uh, it could be in one of our school districts that we partner with in one of our three different states or 16 different countries. We also um, understand that a lot of students, especially right now, are thinking that they want to go into business and economics. Um, we have tons and tons of majors within the College of Business and Economics. In fact, currently we have like 15 different majors um, for you to choose from, but it's completely okay if you come into college and you say, I want to major in business but I'm not sure what I wanna major in within business. That's great. Business is this big. And when you're with us, we wanna make sure that you're understanding all aspects of business. So we'll be placing all students, whether they um, have declared a, major, a specific major within business or not in business core. This allows our students to kind of get an understanding of what business entails. And then whenever you graduate with us, not only will you have an understanding and be an expert in your field, but you also understand a little bit about finance, a little bit about accounting, about supply chain management, about management, about um, administration, all these different things that come together to make a well-rounded businessman or a businesswoman. For example, we do have tons of internships um, every year for our students. Um, in fact, the majority of our students, although only one internship is required, we're seeing every year that Tons of students are choosing to do multiple internships during their time with us. Uh, but we also offer experiences right here on campus. For example, the Eagle Investment Group, which is comprised of our upper, upper level finance majors, they're given over $1 million of the university's endowment. So the university gives this group of students over $1 million and allows them to invest however they see fit. And that's been going on for like 20 years. And we've only not turned a profit its very first year. So all those profits that we're seeing in that group are getting turned back into scholarships, which you guys will actually be some of the benefactors of. The College of Arts and Sciences is a large college on campus. In fact, it's so big that we break it up into a couple different sections, including social sciences. So if our students are thinking maybe they wanna go on for social work or psychology or criminal justice, um, maybe history or political science, this will be your home away from home. We focus a lot on undergraduate research um, here within this um, social science spectrum. Um, we want our students to be able to, um, again, have a little bit more on their resumes um, and have a little bit more experience during their time with us. We have tons of students who present at it on their research at national conferences, regional conferences, or um, the conference that we hold right here on our campus for all of our undergraduate students. Um, if you're somebody who's thinking right now, I really have an interest in history and political science, that's awesome. We are home to the Ashbrook Scholars Program, um, which is like an honorary for history and political science majors or minors. Um, 
My favorite thing about this program is that going back to our Ashland promise, saying that we don't um, tell our students how to think, we don't, we don't tell our students what to think, but instead how to think. Um, it starts in the history books and we don't use history books or textbooks in any variety in the history and political science um, classes. We instead use primary documents. So when you're learning about the Declaration of Independence, you're going to learn about the Declaration of Independence by reading the Declaration, by looking at the rough drafts, maybe even reading the Mayflower Compact to decide, well, why was this phrased this way? Or why was it written this way on draft number two? But by the time it got to the final document, this was rewritten this many times. Um, just a really cool way to think about history and decide what you believe happened and what you believe, and then be able to advocate for your thoughts as well. If you are um, thinking that you want to go on to major in biology or chemistry, toxicology, environmental science, we um, offer tons of research opportunities for our, uh, for our undergraduates. Um, in fact, the majority of our students do complete some type of research. 75% of our students complete independent research, meaning that they are the lead researcher of, um, it could, could be any natural science-based project. Um, we also partner with the Cleveland Clinic, which is currently a very highly ranked um, hospital in the entire world. Um, we have a biology concentration um, that allows our students to do three years of biology with us on our main campus and one year of medical laboratory science in the Cleveland Clinic campus, um, which is in Cleveland, Ohio, so about an hour away from campus. Um, and then you would graduate with a biology degree and be certified as a medical laboratory scientist. So we all hear it every day about medical testing, right? Whether it be a coronavirus test or a strep throat test or anything like that that we've ever had before, um, you always get your swab taken at the doctor's, right? And then it gets sent away to this mysterious lab. And whether it be a couple hours or a couple days later, you get your results. Well, if you um, are near a Cleveland Clinic campus, um, it is likely that one of our Ashland University students had their hands um, in that lab or is doing um, possibly even your individualized test. We know that our students are more than one dimensional students. So we have um, worked it out so that our students who come to AU, if you want to major in any of our 60 plus majors, but you still wanna be involved in the fine arts, so sculpture, drawing, illustration, things like that, or you wanna be involved in music or band or theater, or you wanna write for our school newspaper or be on our school radio station, we allow all students, whether they are majors or minors, um, to participate in those um, arts. But maybe you want to major in that, and that's awesome as well. We have tons of studio space for our students majoring in fine art. Our music students not only learn the theory and the history behind music, but also have individualized lesson plans to tone their skills a little bit more. And then our journalism and digital media students um, have the opportunity to write for our school newspaper, to be a part of our radio station and part of our television station. So we will graduate students who want to go on to work in the media as triple threats. Coming from Indiana, I'm sure many of you guys have not been to the Ashland area. Um, we are located just about an hour away from Akron, Cleveland, or Columbus. So we're in the heart of Ohio. Um, we, I'm a little bit biased, like I said at the beginning, so I think that we have just about the best location we can. We have the safety of a small town. We have about 20,000 residents. Um, we have the, um, we have just enough to do here with cute downtown. So like a little coffee shop or a restaurant or boutiques or a state forest or hiking trails. We have all that right here, but it's not gonna be a distraction for our students. But if you're looking for a distraction or you're looking for some entertainment or maybe you're looking for an internship in a specific company, we likely can get you there because we're only an hour away from some of the biggest cities in the state. We also, as the university, get along really well with the Ashland community, which means that we can host um, pretty stellar events. We are an extremely safe town with that being said. In fact, SafeWise ranks Ashland, Ohio as one of the safest college towns in the country. Not only do, are we centered in a safe city, but we are also a safe campus. So we have 24 seven safety services. We also in the city of Ashland have um, a state police barracks, a sheriff's office, and then city police as well. 
Um, so very well patrolled in the area. Um, we have a Campus Shield app, which allows our students to um, use it as an emergency notification system. It's also how we talk to our students as a university if we need to get a mass message out. And parents, you can join that as well. Um, so when your student was with us, um, you'll be made aware of their classes are canceled or if something's going on on campus. And then of course, I'd be remiss not to mention um, how we're handling our coronavirus policies right now. Um, the majority of our students did choose to come back to campus and attend classes in person, which is great. Um, we are offering, of course, other types of um, learning environments if that's what they chose to do. Um, and then, of course, we have really upped our cleaning and sanitizing. We wear masks, social distance, and same things that you guys are doing to help help fight the spread. We um, have a pretty residential campus. The majority of our students do live on campus with us for all four years, um, which I am also from out of state. When I chose to come to Ashland University, I was in Pennsylvania with my family. Um, so when I was looking at a college, I wanted to make sure that if the weekend came around, I was not gonna be the only one left on campus. <laughs> um, so uh, that's not the case here. You will definitely have friends who stay with you all four years right here on campus. Um, in our residence halls, we do have living learning communities, which allows our students to live with other first year students majoring in similar um, majors to them. That allows um, built in accountability. It also allows some studying to go on and some um, just living with like minded individuals. Um, the resident assistants, or what you will hear, hear called RAs in most college campuses, um, are there to help assist with any um, anything for first year students and every student after that, whether that be a social issue that you need to overcome, or whether that be a studying issue, or you need to learn how to utilize a campus resource, or something like that. RAs also are in charge of I'm bringing the floor together by doing floor programs that are educational and social at the same time. Um, if you um, are somebody who's going to be living in Ashland with mom or dad, um, we definitely have commuter services as well, including a commuter's lounge for our students to hang out in um, since they won't have a room to be in during um, those off times between classes and whatnot. If you've heard or if you've done your research about Ashland University, I know that you've heard about our food. We are um, one of the highest ranked dining halls in the country um, for college dining. Um, I know that sounds a little bit silly, but it's where you have to eat for four years. So it should be pretty good, right? Um, we have five different locations right on our main campus. All of our first year students get unlimited meal plans, meaning you can go into our main dining hall as often as you would like. Um, the menu changes four times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late night. So tons of options for you as a student. Um, even if you're the world's pickiest eater, which literally was my roommate, um, I know there's gonna be tons of things for you to enjoy um, because everything is separated to help with any dietary restrictions or accommodations that we might need. We're known specifically not only for good homemade food, um, but also chocolate chip cookies. And there's really nothing better than a warm chocolate chip cookie. We have a very, very active student body um, for a couple of different reasons. I accredit it largely to the fact that almost all of our students live on campus with us. So there's really no reason not to be involved. We have 130 some clubs and organizations for our students to take a part in. So maybe you are somebody who's gonna really jump into the Office of Christian Ministries or Fraternity and Sorority Life, or maybe you're going to um, be a part of our club or intramural sports teams. Maybe you're gonna wanna work when you're on campus. I'll put a little shameless plug in right here that we're always looking for tour guides. Um, so once you've spent a little bit of time on campus and you're ready to help students um, in high school find their home at AU2, you can come find us. Um, we have tons of um, activities being brought to campus, including um, bands and concerts and comedians and festivals and things like that. Most of those events are already included in your cost to attend as well. So you don't have to worry about paying an admissions fee. Speaking of admissions fees, our students do not pay an admissions fee to get into our athletic events. And we're pretty good. In fact, we're ranked in the top 10 in some of the best um, Division II sports in the country currently. Um, what we're looking at here in this image is actually our men's track and field team who won both indoor and outdoor um, national championships our last full academic year, um, which has not been done very often. 
Uh, so we um, are pretty proud of our student athletes because they're doing well. They're doing well on the track and on the court and on the field and in the pool, but they're also doing really well in the classroom. Um, we humanly, our overall athletic GPA is a cumulative 3.14 GPA. So our student athletes definitely understand that in order to be a student athlete at Ashland University, they're a student first and an athlete second. One of my favorite stories um, comes from a chemistry professor who received an email from one of our women's basketball team athletes. Um, so the, our women's basketball team um, is currently ranked as the number one team in women's basketball in division two right now. Um, they've had a win streak of over 70 games. It's crazy. Um, but they were playing for the national championship title again. And um, one of the players emailed the chemistry professor and asked her to open up an assignment that was not due for like almost a month out. And the chemistry professor was like, oh, uh, okay, sure. Like I can do this for you. And it was important enough to them to have um, study study tables or like study time during their national championship run that it was actually carved out into their schedule, which I thought was pretty cool. If you're a student who wants to become an athlete, but you're like, mm, I don't think that varsity sports is really for me. That's great. We have club sports, which does involve a little bit of travel. You still wear the purple and gold. You travel a little bit. Um, it's more tournament style. Or um, maybe you just want to play intramural sports where we have the traditional basketball, softball, soccer um, type things. Or maybe you're really skilled in inner tube water polo or Mario Kart or something like that. We have all types of athletic events here on campus. So typically about this time, uh, I have a few students who are like, yeah, that sounds really great, but I, I know college is an investment. How much does all of this cost? Well, we're actually one of the most affordable private schools in the country. And great news for you being an Indiana student, we don't have an out-of-state tuition. We don't have any out-of-state fees or anything like that that you need to be made aware of. So what we're looking at here is just the total cost to attend. Tuition is frozen for four years and that is your classes. So this is a full-time course load um, is what you'll be paying every year for four years. Room is your residence hall. Board is your meal plan. So I've mentioned before, this is your unlimited meal plan. This cost will adjust as you move forward and you are able to choose different meal plans. And then fees, we have budgeted about $1,000, but that includes a little bit of everything. So I've mentioned that our campus activities board programming is typically included in that. Admissions events and admissions into uh, athletic events, that's included. Um, going into the rec center is included. So your rec center membership is included in your cost to attend. Um, laundry, printing, connecting to our Wi-Fi, using our computer labs, all of that is included right into those total fees so that we don't have to worry about those pesky out-of-pocket expenses once you're here. So altogether, our students are paying right around $35,000. And again, that is what everybody pays, whether they are from Ashland, Ohio, or Indiana, or California, New York, it doesn't matter. So if we're looking at this student cost example here in front of us, this student is the only person in their household in college. Um, he or she has a 22 in the ACT, a 3.5 high school GPA, um, and they make an above slightly average income as a household um, in the state of Ohio. So we're looking over here at the right hand side and we can see that the student also filed their FAFSA. If you are a senior, um, the FAFSA opened up for you on October 1st and the free application for federal student aid is pretty much just like the thumbs up to your college saying, yes, I want, I want some financial aid. Um, so this student qualifies for an academic based award, um, also some need based money. Um, as well as federal student loans and work study coming from their FAFSA. Something I do want to make note of is down below where we're looking at the base cost, subtracting the gift aid, which is what you don't pay back, um, subtracting the student loans, which are federal student loans. We don't count federal work study into the approximation of total cost to attend because we don't know if you want to work. We don't know how much you'll work or anything like that. Um, just know that money is out there on the table for you. If you would like to work on campus to help reduce the cost to attend, you're more than welcome to do so, but we don't assume that at this point. You're probably looking at that cost example and saying, well, that's not necessarily me. I have a higher GPA or my mom and dad don't make that amount or um, whatever it may be for you, completely okay. Um, definitely utilize our cost to attend if 
or across to attend calculator. Um, I definitely recommend this for everybody. It's free. The results don't get sent to anybody but yourself. But if you're a senior, my recommendation is to just apply and we'll do all that for you. So if you are a senior student, please um, apply whenever you feel ready. We do what's called rolling admissions, so we don't have any deadlines. So whether you applied right away on August 1st, whenever the application started, or you apply next August, which please don't do that, those students give me anxiety, um, we will not be closing the application. The only date that you need to be made aware of is May 1st, which is when we no longer accept updated academic credentials. So when you apply and you use our free application, um, which can be found at ashland.edu slash apply or utilizing the Common App, whatever you prefer, um, our personal application does not require essays or test scores. We are currently requiring official high school transcripts and official test scores. At, if anything changes, we'll obviously be letting you guys know. Um, that's what we need for admission. So once I receive your transcript, your test score, and your official uh, transcript, that's all we need. In a week or two after you've applied, we'll start processing that. And then a few weeks later, you'll learn if you're going to be an Eagle or not. And then once you are accepted, please file your FAFSA. Uh, you can actually file your FAFSA at any time. Um, we won't be able to view it, however, until you've been accepted. Once we have your FAFSA, we will start processing your official um, financial aid package. We'll send that out to you in a letter form. And then a little after you receive your financial aid award letter in the mail, we will give you a call to firstly make sure you've received it. And secondly, to ask if you have any questions. This is, you know, we're talking about a lot of money here. We're talking about a lot of different terminologies that we, we don't use every day. Um, so we want to make sure that we are all on the same page when it comes to financial aid. We ask that you let us know if you want to be an Eagle by May 1st. If you do decide that you want to join Eagle Nation, we're super happy to have you. Let us know at any time by submitting your enrollment deposit. Um, but if you decide that Ashland is not the best place for you right now, also, okay, just let me know. And then once you make the commitment that you are coming to Ashland, we will start working with you with housing and scheduling your orientation and getting you a class schedule made. If you're a student who um, has graduated high school and has attended college credit or college credit based classes elsewhere. These steps are for you, very similar, but instead of needing a high school transcript, we're going to require your college transcripts. Now, if you are one of the overachieving high school students um, and you've taken College Credit Plus, Advanced Placement, CLEPT, International Baccalaureate, or any other college credit classes, um, we do accept all of those um, credits. We just um, will have you be applying as a first year student. I want to be in contact with you all. I mentioned that I will be in contact with you guys. Um, if anything changes that you need to be made aware of on campus or in the admissions process, but I want you guys to be in contact with us as well. So follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, join us on Facebook, um, whatever you need to do to stay in contact with us. If you have particular questions, which I'm obviously happy to answer today while I have you all with me, but if you um, stay in a hour or a week or a month from now, you're like, oh, I should have asked Kylie this question um, during the um, Indiana College Fair. Oh, you can still ask me. Give me a call, shoot me an email. And this is for you too, mom and dad. Um, I definitely do not think that any question is going to be too silly, um, whether it be a question about applying, a question about financial aid, a question about an academic course or a program. You can ask us anything from hey, I visited this school and they have this program. Does Ashland have something like that? Or, hey, I'm trying to apply and it's, it's asking me this question, what does that mean? I had this epiphany my senior year of high school that I could not go someplace that did not have good water pressure. I know, sounds a little bit silly, right? Um, so I literally called every school that I was accepted to and asked them about their water pressure. Uh, so rest easy. Ashland has great water pressure. I would not have lived here for four years if I didn't have good water pressure. But if it's something like that and you guys are just concerned about it, you have every right to be. Please give me a call. Let me know what you're wondering about and I'm happy to help you out. So with that all being said, if we have any questions, please shoot them in the Q&A box and I'm happy to address it in the last couple minutes that we have. 
All right. Thank you so much, Kylie. I know I learned some great things about Ashland University. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a few pointers towards the end of our presentation. All right, so again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we're really glad that you guys took the time to learn more about these different universities. At the end of your presentation, you're going to give set a quick survey just to let us know how we did and if there's anything we can improve upon. Again, if you'd like to sign up for any more sessions, we do have a few more through the rest of this week. You can sign up at um, inacac.org, and there's going to be a list to choose from. If you'd like to go back and listen to this amazing presentation again, you can do so again at our NAC website and just search for Ashland University. So again, I thank our presenter so much for taking the time and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Bye-bye.